Hello and welcome back to Conversations That Matter from the wisdomfactory.net. I'm Heidi Hörnlein and I'm leading conversations with people who have conversations that matter to offer. And today we want to talk about art as a creative process, life as a creative process. And as you already hear, it is about art too. Uh, we will speak in English, also we both are German. My guest today is Ulrike Hoffmann Schill, and I got to know her in the Integral Conference in Nuremberg in this year, 2019. And I'm excited about what she's doing. She offered their drawing, um, how, how was it, drawing possibilities for people to, to come back and work on what they had uh, experienced in the conference by drawing. But it doesn't seem to be your main uh, focus. But before we speak about that, I want her to introduce herself and say a little bit who she is and why she came to the title Life as a Creative Process. So over to you. Hi, Heidi. Thank you for taking your time and uh, for your idea to interview me. I'm, I'm really excited. Um, well, um, the creative process for me uh, consciously started when, when I um, did my graduation uh, in high school and actually wanted to study German literature, but then uh, one night, I, I just couldn't sleep, and I, I knew I had to do something different. And I, I had this dream of being independent and uh, uh, on my own, and um, to be able to do what, what, what I like to do. So I thought, when I study German literature, uh, I will, I will um, end up as a teacher. Mm. I mean, teachers are important, mm. but I couldn't see myself as a teacher. So um, I didn't know about writing. I could have done that too, but uh, I would have been dependent on, I don't know. Uh, editors. <laughs> editors and stuff. Uh, I wanted to do something that, that you know, is all, all in my own hands. So I decided to become a goldsmith. My, my parents were shocked and uh, my father was wise and said, okay, do that and you can still study something decent. <laughs> <See it. laughs> In the, these times, probably even today, something decent is go to university and do something cognitive with your head and live yes. in your head. Yeah. Yes. So... Um, Things went easy. I found my teacher, and um, um, and with the first weeks of, um, I mean, I had made jewelry hobby-wise, you know, so I kind of knew that I could do that, and and I would love to do that. Um, but then to really work with the metal and and the tools and and. Uh, uh, learn new techniques and have more possibilities. Um, I, I don't know. I felt my brain widening and um, my, my experience widening. And um, I was so happy. Mm -hmm. I was so happy. And what happened too was that um, I was able to read books a different way. I would pick up the books I read in school and uh, there were new books to me. No, no um, rules and how to interpret things. They, they were connected to life for me. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, that, could, you, could you tell a little bit more? So you learned uh, new techniques in Goldsmith in, in making jewelry, which we will see as a, form, really a great form of art. And uh, by doing this, you found your purpose and your mind opened up. And so you were able to access 
what you had should have learned before <laughs> in school in a different way and you understood it better? Yes. Um, at that time, I couldn't explain it, but now uh, we know that um, the brain develops new synapses when, when, when you um, uh, work with your hands and learn something new with your hands. With so, your body. Um, I, I, I um, gained a whole new spectrum. So, meanwhile, I have read a lot of more books than I could have possibly read when I had become a German teacher. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, doing uh, the same, um, uh, the same literature over and over and reading bad essays about them. <laughs> <laughs> what you would have done in, in studying German literature. <laughs> if, if I would have become a teacher, yes. Yeah. So, um, that night, uh, when I decided to become a, a goldsmith, um, I maybe that's important. Yes, I I kind of fled from home. I I couldn't my dilemma. I couldn't talk to anybody about that. I couldn't explain what happened to me. I went to the opera, and I'm I'm not an opera fan. It was just I I had to go someplace where I was in the dark, and something happened on the stage, and and so it was. Music, it was in the dark. Uh, I was among people who were excited about the, the um, play. And, uh, but still I was on my own and, and um, I couldn't see so much. I was way in the back. Uh, and I didn't understand anything of what they sang. So, um, and I don't remember uh, which, which opera it was. Um, but anyway, I, I being there, I got into a stage um, again in an open, open space uh, where this idea kind of uh, took form uh, that I would would have to do something creative and uh, would have to learn a craft. That is also interesting. That music helped you to come into this. Uh, state experience again of opening and of understanding what is really right for you. I mean, yeah. music has a huge power. <laughs> I know yeah, and it was a large group of people. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there's energy. I mean, we, we, we are connected mm. you know, in uh, listening to the opera and, and enjoying the music and, and all this. And, and I sat in the dark, you know, mm -hmm. that was, I don't know. <laughs> When I think of that now, um, it was a very intense um, experience <clears throat> and um, uh, very important for my life. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> after that, I said, at that time, you know, um, there was a restaurant uh, in the train station open all night. And I, I drank coffee and wrote across the, the um, program. Uh, the paper program I had, I, I wrote my my um, my life prospect. <laughs> oh, good. And I still have that, and it, it kind of um, well, I started then I, I finished my my um, uh, apprenticeship, and I studied at the um, uh, art school at at, a, at diff two different kinds of art schools, and. Um, until I was 42, um, this prospered, and uh, I had exhibitions, and uh, I never had a shop. I, I was very free in, in what I worked on. I had private customers, yes, and I did what they wanted me to do, or they bought what, what I offered. But um, I was selling uh, via galleries and, uh, yeah, and, and exhibitions. And um, when I was 42, I, uh, I thought I would need something, some kind of profession. Um, like when I, when I, like my eyes wouldn't work anymore and my hands maybe not as, be as intricate. Um, 
so I, I took a training as a um, psychotherapist. And uh, <clears throat> the teacher I found, he, he was spiritually oriented. And uh, I heard the first time I heard about uh, new death experiences and uh, uh, I don't know, heaven, <laughs> the other realms of heaven that uh, church doesn't tell you. And um, so a whole new um, era oh, realm opened. And um, of course, after this short training, I wasn't fit to be a th psychotherapist. I wouldn't. I just tried it at first, and I, I thought I, I would have to go and study then. Mm -hmm. um, Let me ask a moment. Why did you choose uh, psychotherapy? Uh, because I was in therapy for quite some time. Um, you know, to work on things, <laughs> stuff from the past and so. Mm -hmm. um, and I felt well enough uh, to go on and provide this for other people. Mm -hmm. So the psychotherapy for you was a means of cleaning up your let's say, incongruences of the past. And well, you I learned that you... Was, uh, um, I don't know how, how, how it was called. It was um, body work, too. You know, it was uh, okay. my, my mind and body and, and uh, emotion. And this is important because you said at the beginning uh, that you realized that we cannot live only in the head, but that the body, you, you said the hands, but the body altogether is important for for us to become whole human beings, you know, and yes. that was for you the moment to dive into this new direction. And then you I intensified it. That's, that's great. So what came out of that? The decision to become psychotherapist and then... <laughs> no, um, no, I didn't, I, I didn't manage to study, but ah. um, I, uh, this therapist, um, this teacher, um, told everybody in the course to not just take it for themselves, but to to do something with what we learn. And um, again, something happened um, just just a couple of weeks before I read in the newspapers that the AIDS association, the AIDS group in in Nuremberg, um, looked for um, uh, what do you call them? The volunteer for volunteers to to kind of support and, and um, help people who, who got their um, uh, diagnosis. Yeah. And at that time, that was um, 90, 89, 1989. Uh, at that time, I mean, it was a death sentence. You know, mm -hmm. They didn't have uh, good, good medicine for that. So, um, <clears throat> Um, I, I said, uh, the only thing I can think of, uh, I could do that. And, um, and the group, we, we then got uh, each two um, supporters who would, would take care that I would do it and, and do it well, you know. So, um, so that's what I did. I, I spent 10 years doing volunteer work at the AIDS group and um, had very, very um, deep experiences. And uh, it wasn't as dull as, as you would think. A lot of fun, you know. Those gay people, they're so much fun and still best friends, those who survived. We just... Uh... That is great. What did you do with them then? Oh, actually, just listen and um, support them in in, in their um, uh, decisions, you know. And and um, like the gay people at that time, also they, they they had a lot of stress, you know, because they didn't wouldn't tell their their parents, and um, and then getting sick. Um, yeah. They had so much stress, so and nobody to talk to. You know, they couldn't talk to their parents or to their colleagues or so. You know. 
So this one guy, he, he probably got infected. I th he thinks at uh, 16, I met him when he was 19. He was already with a partner and they're still together. Mm. Being almost 50 now, you know. And um, like doctors at that time weren't, well, they didn't know. I didn't know. And I told them, uh, don't expect from them, you know, to know. You have to tell them. They're not in your body. I mean, you know, it was this kind of uh, thing or like he, uh, he did civil service. Then um, instead of going to the military and um, they, they, uh, came to ask him what was wrong with him because he had this um, expensive medicine that they had to pay for. <laughs> and he was terrified to go to this uh, doctor. Um, of the military. He wanted to stay there. He wanted to continue the service. And I told him, you have to find a way to trust this doctor it was a lady doctor uh, maybe that was good and um, he said he told her I'm afraid of the consequences when um, when I tell you and then she said really great she said um, why don't you make me know and I pretend it wasn't you <laughs> <laughs> and I can ask um, for principle, you know, what to do if this case, uh, uh, if this is the case. Yeah. And uh, so that was, you know, they, I mean, he was 19, you know, um, that gave him a lot of confidence. And she did well. She did really well. She, she um, told him what, that he could go on. Um, as he wasn't dealing with food, he was a driver for, for uh, handicapped children. So he could go on. And then, then he could tell her and he, she could do the exams and everything was okay. But that was the kind of public work that, that the, the persons had to do themselves, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, those were the experiences the doctors uh, needed, right? And the same thing, um, he was um, at the university, uh, with a doctor at the university in Erlangen, and um, <clears throat> I was asked by the doctor if, if he would, would, um, would, would be part of studies uh, to test new medicine. So he was always at, at the edge of the new medicine and, and always tested and he survived. And um, meanwhile, you know, uh, they they have medicine that don't harm them s as much anymore, and they they get the the virus load uh, very low, so the virus doesn't doesn't do any harm to their brains and stuff. Right. So he was for sure a, an open-minded person, and we know from personality studies that open-minded person people normally are very creative. So he was creative in his life too. And so he survived. Yeah. And he, he had a wonderful career and, uh, and is still with his partner. They get married then and, and, and they're both 50 now, right? Mm -hmm. The partner never got infected. Uh, oh, that's, yeah. that was pretty that's cool. great. Yeah. And we are still friends. So now let's come back to you and your your career as well, actually, a creative uh, person. <laughs> yeah, these were were ex great experiences for me. Like you know, as a as an artist, um, you're egocentric kind, of, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, so this this kind of social work was was great for me, you know, and and inspiring too. And it gave me a lot of self-confidence also and uh, yes um, okay and and the main thing was that um, this uh, my my uh, the therapist teacher I had as he was um, 
spiritually oriented. Um, he had met a, a um, healer in Los Angeles who published a book that also was in German and um, by then, and he had us read these books. They were about the chakras, about the ener energy centers in, in the body. And um, I thought it was interesting. But when I, when I um, dealt with the AIDS patients, you know, um, I found out that I can do hands-on healing and, and that they got so well by that. And uh, so I, I thought, well, actually, I, I should learn more about that. But then I thought, well, with my um, craft, I, did, I didn't earn that much money to go and have a, um, a training in the U.S. And that year, she came to Germany and taught here. And I got to know by someone, just by chance. And the chances, maybe I never chances. <laughs> Yes. Synchronicities. I wonder. Yeah. yeah, but I was open to that, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. And, um, well, I started more or less 20 years with her, and we have quite a, quite a um, community in Germany. Uh, and we still meet. She, she doesn't come anymore, but we still meet. So, um, Do you want to name her, the name? from? That's Rosalind Bruyere. Mm -hmm. And she was the one who has written the book uh, you were talking about, or not? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was um, Wheels of Light. Mm -hmm. And um, so I have a lot of people that I can ask when, whenever I have a task uh, in my healing work uh, that I, I'm not sure about if I, if I do everything I need to do or if I can do better. So um, I was, I was, I'm, I'm happy about this community because as artists, you don't have that, right? You are alone. Yeah, yeah. So what I find curious that you have now combined both. You wanted to be alone and do the things alone on your own without having bosses and so on, or dependent on other people. And you do that. And on the other hand, you have a community of people where you can always referred to that isn't that great <laughs> that's great it's really great and i mean i know you 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 have that and need that too right yeah you can understand very very well yeah. well um so i've started healing practice and um so it's it's um side by side now um and Sad enough, my mother died uh, quite early. She was 76. She was, nobody thought that would happen. She was healthy and everything, but she had an aneurysm mm. um, and had a severe stroke and was gone overnight. And I took care of my dad. Um, I mean, he, he lived on his own and, and not not around here so um he did he did um he, he did paintings and together with friends and my mother who was driving uh they did um painting trips, <laughs> uh, trips. and he was very sad that this would stop and i told him well let's let's do that together and i will start painting hmm. So that's how I got to paint. <laughs> we we spent two weeks um, every year uh, together and and painted. So I I did watercolor, aquarelle painting, landscape painting, and uh, um, did pretty good because I had actually I I did have the trainings um, at at the art schools right, and uh, but never used it for for free. Um, uh, expression <laughs> <laughs> yeah. in art and yeah and a and, um, couple of well actually two three years ago um, my, my, my father became almost 100 and um, until he was 95 we did paint together I mean after a while 
like, I don't know, the last two, three years, he didn't want to travel anymore. So I went to see him where he lived and, and stay there. And, and we, um, we uh, explored the, the surrounding, right? And um, after he died, I, I did paint a little, but it became less and less. And if you're not in training, um, it's very uh, disappointing when you do it just for, for fun, um, uh, for two hours or, or a day or so, you know, uh, you have to stick to it to, to come to new, uh, to, um, to the creativity, the full creativity. Well, it's, it's not so much the creativity, but it's, it's a skill actually that you have to train. Mm -hmm. Plus I've, I thought I would have to do something new. I mean, something different. I mean, uh, I've, I kind of, uh, I had a, my own style in doing the watercolor painting, but still, I mean, it was landscape painting and uh, it was nice and pretty, but uh, it didn't satisfy me anymore. And a couple of years ago, um, I started, no, actually it was last year. <laughs> I, I started a whole new kind of painting, um, still on paper, <laughs> watercolor, but uh, with wax. And a, a small part of that was the, the uh, intuitive painting that I um, uh, offered at the conference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time I did, did uh, this for people, you know. Oh, good. <laughs> and I didn't learn anything that way, you know. It was, uh, it was just something that I knew um, or that I, I used or, or and mm -hmm. found out for myself, you know. So it's almost like uh, art therapy and healing by art, you know. Did you think to get that together in your healing um, career? to put their, their art in? Not, not really, but um, it, it was just my experience that uh, it's, it's the expression of a realm that usually is suppressed. Mm -hmm. So it, it was self-feeling I did for me and uh, like for the, for the conference, I, I figured um, it's, it's a self check for people um, at what stage they are over, over the days, you know, mm -hmm. like starting a painting in the morning and then it had to dry and then uh, they would go on later. And at the end, uh, they would have something that's different than they started out with. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a self check, actually. And it doesn't need to be pretty or uh, a piece of art or anything, you know. But uh, like colors and shapes and um, new techniques um, are, are very, very important for, for staying in touch with, um, with life and with other people and with um, your higher self, whatever. Um, and with the cosmos, um, it's, it's so important for life to not just uh, go on one lane. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry that I missed that in, in Nuremberg. I didn't come also because I knew that I couldn't stay there the whole time. I was there only okay. one day. So it's sort of useless to, to start something and not finish it up. But next time I sure will. We'll do that. <laughs> so my next question is, you came to Integral and how did that happen? And how do you integrate that? Or how is it useful for your life and also for what you are doing? Well, actually, um, the first book I, I read by Ken Wilber was, um, um, what is it called? In in English. Um, Sachs auf Deutsch? Ja, um, Halbzeit der Evolution. Ah, Ab from Eden in English. Ah, okay. 
Oh, that was also one which hooked me completely. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, that's 40 years ago, right? Yeah, I yeah. Think 30 years. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, 40 years ago. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, long it time. It doesn't matter. <laughs> um, and there was not yet the integral um, theory. I, I didn't follow that, really. Mm-hmm. Um, what I like about the integral um, community is that there are so many spiritual men really um, uh, taking their part. Like in the Hilo community, they're mostly women. Mm-hmm. Very few men, maybe sometimes just one fourth or one third, never more. Yeah, and at, at the conference, I, I found uh, you know, it was half and half, actually. Mm-hmm. The strange thing is healing was, the shamans often were men. I mean, that was never that this was uh, only in the hand of women. Now it seems also doctors uh, are mainly women. It has gone over as a feminine and a less important thing uh, in the world, you know, because it's often still considered what women do as not so important because it's not only in the mind. So when we grow up and when we come into integral, hopefully, that will change. No? We will be able to appreciate uh, things in a different way. And that's also, yeah, there are many men who, who have been opened at least through the green stage of development to the sensitivity and have understood that only being in the head is not not a good thing. Also because of the theory, no? we know that there are insights and outsides. And in, in the past, the outside view on the world was so important. What you can measure, what you can see and everything and what you cannot measure doesn't exist. No, That was the idea. And art was something, yeah, nice for some women and artists, eccentric men maybe, yeah, but it's not really important in school. The, it's not important at all. And now we know through the newer studies how it is important, super important. Actually, we knew it also already in the 80s and 90s, how much it is important to do something with what we call the left uh, side of the brain to 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 equalize. And what you said at the beginning, that after doing these new things with your hands and your body, you could understand better. That's exactly what happens, you know. And schools still don't realize that. They still stuff stuff in, in people uh, that they have to learn it instead of equal, equilibrating, or how do you say, uh, this with art, with music, you know, with all sort of creative things. Themselves, yeah. yeah. It will still take time until we understand that. And people like you are pioneers. And I would say also most of the people in the integral level are uh, working towards that, that uh, to unification, integration of, of everything, which uh, means to be human, what, what human means to be, I don't know how to say that in English, but I hope people understand. Yeah, we'll have to, we have to realize that our capacities are so much larger than, than um, is known, well, is recognized in the Western world. Um, we have, we have so many possibilities. It, it, life can be so rich. Yeah, we have reduced that. Not the material, material wishes, you know. Yeah, yeah. And so what you have done, it has opened your mind, especially also this work with, uh, with a marginalized group like the gay people who were still uh, even ill and probably would have had to die. And you realized how much human they are. <laughs> and how much they can give us and they are not to be pushed away into some some corner and then you have realized how much art can give you how much body work can give you so is it now that you for that go out and tell people that this is important or show people maybe maybe more than tell <laughs> you're doing 
that now here. Yeah. And I did, um, two years ago, I published this book about the creative process. And it's mainly about um, what, what, what I created making jewelry. But um, it shows how much, how much, um, uh, how much had, had changed for me. Like, um, it's, it's not so easy to see, but it, it's, um, I, a couple of years ago, I developed this jewelry. Um, it's um, a um, volume uh, without mass. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's space without mass. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I try to be a very normal person and I talk to everybody and I, I drink wine and I eat meat and all this, but, um, actually I think I'm more spiritual than I realized myself. And it, it shows in, in what, what started to evolve uh, with my new jewelry. Yeah. It's my clients are not not yet really happy with that. You know, I have to I really have to do uh, to convince them. They like it when I wear it, right? But uh, they can't imagine wearing the things themselves. I love big jewelry, but I do make small things for my clients. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I saw these the pictures of your jewelry in your book, and they are marvelous. I I really got caught uh, the forms, and you gave the name now. You said you make volume without mass, and I think that was the thing where I was attracted to because also the dancing figures, which were not not figures, but they were figures. You know, they were just the outlines. Yeah, and it happened more or less by itself. I, I um, did the first pieces was con uh, um, constructed out of straight lines, um, but then I wanted to integrate uh, stones, and uh, I didn't just want want to put the um, setting uh, on top of it. So. I did integrate the setting integral, <laughs> <laughs> um, and and you know those shapes evolved. I didn't I didn't want to do a, a figure. It's even a heart in there. Wonderful. <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> you know, and that's exactly what creativity is. Yeah. That you start out, you want to do something. You knew more, more or less where you want. You knew that you wanted to do a, 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 a piece of jewelry, yeah. and you wanted to integrate the stone and do it in a different way. And then you are open to what comes out of uh, yourself or the universe or whatever you you want to 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 name that. And this is exactly the creative process. And we have. Everybody has at least a piece of creativity in themselves. They have people, there are people that have more and there are people who have less. But isn't it great if you can rely on starting something and then something good will come out? And if it is not so good at a certain point, you can change it and then you can change it until it comes out as you want it. And by the way, that's the feminine way of doing. And yes. that's yes. really great. And and, you know, um, I don't do any arbitrary design, right? Um, and I love metal. And what metal does when you uh, forge it or uh, put it through the rollers, um, I, I sometimes start out with shapes. Uh, well, I'm, I'm really a crafter. I, I work with with the material and the techniques and I my ideas start out with uh, I know how to make it I, or I know how how to start something in a new way and I wonder what's going what shape will evolve mm -hmm. right so um, I'm I was trained in the Bauhaus tradition and uh, like the first sewing and filing works were um, circle, square, and triangle. 
Um, and I'm completely off that. You know, it, it's good to know for proportion. And it's, um, there is sacred geometry. Um, and those shapes belong to that too. But um, I feel right now everything gets more fluid and, and softer. And uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> the straight lines bend in the way which is needed. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that a metaf metaphor for our lives too? When I we are so. so straight in politics or wherever and that we need to to bend a little bit this, these ideologic ideas of how things should be. <laughs> I, I, I just read something, um, uh, somebody said, well, uh, you have to concentrate on one thing. And um, remember Steve Jobs concentrated on one thing and he was very successful, but he didn't live very long. Yeah, and he was a man. That's the male way of uh, of doing. Doesn't mean that men can't do it in a different way, and that women can't do it that way. I mean, he was he was creative, and he started out working together with somebody else. Who, right? Yeah, but still, the 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 male way is yes, creative, but more focused. While we uh, the feminine way would be in the creativity, more allowing, more more receptive, more seeing what is what is coming in without following too much the uh, a straight line. That's why I came to that, because you were talking about the bending lines, about the uh, abandonment of these strict uh, forms, geometric forms, but they are probably are still there, but they have gone, undergone a mutation, a, a, a transformation, I guess. Yeah. Wonderful. So life is a creative process for you. It has for certain, certainly been and is still a creative process. How do you think uh, to go on in, the, in your life? What do you envision? It must not be, it might not be so, but uh, what do you see at this point of your life where the creativity will bring you? I'll find out. I'll find out. I mean, you, you can't, um, like, actually what I envision is, or what I wish for myself, that I could live every day uh, as if it was my last day. And work every day and not, not push, off, push off things too lightly whatever I do. I would like to connect more with my girlfriends and um, women's groups and uh, uh, spiritual people. I mean, I, I do work a lot on my own, right? And I would like to have more of, of the um, Ausgleich. Uh, balance. Balance, yeah. And not just work so much. I'm 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 too busy with um, uh, office work, and I don't, ah. I don't like that very much. I still have to do it. Yeah, office work, but you don't mean your your jewelry or your your paintings or things. You mean? No, but I, I have to take care of, of uh, yeah. you know write the list for the exhibitions and apply. And right now I'm, I'm applying for uh, several uh, contests and, and an exhibition. Um, and it takes time, it takes time. Yeah. Not so easy. Yeah. As we uh, talked in another group for the feminist art exhibition, you, you will be applying. Yes. And we were wondering what feminist art should be. and. But this is uh, another topic, and if you are interested, oh no, that's not public. But we could do a public conversation about that. What is feminist art? And we get some people together, and if you who are listening to that are interested, we could do that in English and discuss what is feminist art. And then we will figure out, because we were not so sure if they mean feminine art, 
or art of women, or what, what does it mean? And we had several definitions of that. So maybe we can open the space for other people to come into a public conversation. And as I said, if you're interested, connect with me and we will set up a, an appointment. Yeah, um, it was great to talk with you. And as I got to know you, you are really a, an example for creativity and living your life in trust of your inner voice, I would say. Yes. Which, which, is, which is an expression in, in creativity then. And you are a good example for many women who are still holding back or don't believe that they are able to do and blah, 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 blah. That's what could you... Only, it's not only for women. Yeah, I mean, but I'm very much interested in women showing up and doing what, uh, finding out, yeah. getting out of this um, this self-trust issue that they don't trust themselves to be able to do these things. So I, I wonder if you could, what could you give some advice, also to men, but I mean, from your experience, what would be, let's say, the first, the first step to do to create this sort of life, which is deeply satisfying uh, for, for themselves, instead of seeing the others, oh, they got it and I don't, oh, poor me. <laughs> well, it could still happen. You can't do everything that um, uh, others do, right? Um, well, actually, um, I just I just thought, well, last uh, yesterday, I, I when I, walk the dog um, in the afternoon. I had this idea about uh, about the feminist art, <laughs> about the sculpture I would, would like to make. And uh, I found a, a um, blacksmith who, I, I talked to him yesterday, it was just, it's just new, uh, who would help me make it, right? Uh, so it won't be jewelry, but it will be a larger scale. So that's kind of a vision. I, I have, but I know, you know, like physically, I, I will need help with that. You know, I, I, I won't do that alone. And that maybe, maybe that's, that's a vision too, you know, not to work alone too much anymore. Um, uh, other times, you know, I, I, I soak in the bathtub for, for an hour. And my best idea is from there. <laughs> yeah, good. And so you tell people, Go in the bathtub and find your best ideas. <laughs> yes, take, you need to take time to listen, you know, or, or to feel, you know, what you really need. Um, the other thing is, like, uh, sometimes uh, I, I don't know how to go on with, with a certain project or piece. Um, I do knitting, you know. Do something boring <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh, keep your hands busy, you know. Um, so it's not your mind that's uh, turning over and over. Um, or I, I sit in the workshop and bend some wires and, and hold the material and, and try um, things. Uh, so sometimes I just start working to, as soon as I have my, my pliers and, and my uh, material, my, my, my metal, um, and start something maybe something useful, I mean, like doing a, a commission or something. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, ideas will come. Yeah. Like with the craft, you, you have um, boring um, work mm -hmm. to do too, you know, like and, until the piece is finished. <coughs> and during this time, I start to have new ideas. Mm -hmm. you have to, Good. You have to so, keep, keep keep on, right? Yeah, start, 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 and don't wait until you f think you are ready. Start right away, and things will develop out of that. Yeah. That's the the quintessence which I have heard out of what you say. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. So, do you want to tell people your website or where they can get the uh, the book? Yeah, uh, the book is. Um, you can get it from me or, or from the, from the um, uh, bookstore. Um, 
my my book is called um, about the create um, uh, all the way to the stars and back about the creative process. But it is in German or in English? It's it, it's bilingual. It's ah, okay. Mm -hmm. In German, it's called Hoch zu den Sternen und zurück über den kreativen Prozess. Mm -hmm. um, my website is www.tiger-gold.de. Okay, tiger-gold.de. The tiger is one of my power animals, and gold stands for the jewelry. And for the healing energy, I can. I'm. I'm. I have an easy time producing golden energy. <laughs> oh, wonderful! <laughs> so. Or silver, also. You know, because um, my hands know know the, the freaking yeah. of the metals. So, and uh, women, if you want to wear a jewelry which is a little bit different and really exciting, contact her and see. If she can do it for you. Okay. I have a lot of pictures um, on my website. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much, Ulrike, and see you again. Thank you, Heidi. Uh, <laughs> you start me on a new process. It's the first time I, I've, I'm doing this format. And um, it's, it's um, maybe that's um, the new direction, you know, to get things out. Wonderful. Get ideas out. And, and, uh, I'm glad that, and we hope that will, it will go on. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much, Heidi. Bye bye. I enjoyed it a lot. Bye.